Well, so the sun on that crash, like the, it's sorry? very bright, but not enough. It's hard to be a good parent when you're a damaged adult. You become responsible for a life. Well, so the art style in this scene, when it's the, the fake, is very different to the other, the rest of, of the game. So it's quite clearly. It's really easy to get it wrong. What does that mean? And also the text is different because it's up on the screen rather than up in the air where you can click on different life, parts of it. You were like an extension of me. You couldn't talk. You couldn't walk. You could but clearly see, actually. showing an imaginary concept. Yuck. Yeah, yuck. Having your life in my hands. But we need to be ready to click on words, not that there are the opportunities in this. To me. And then one day... <sighs> you got sick. You got sick. It just looked like a cold at first. Marie would send me some grandma remedies. Time inhalers. Yellow sugar potions. I have no idea where she got those. She never did that for us. What is yellow yes. sugar? <laughs> Very. I didn't try any of them. Then maybe you should have. Got worse. <laughs> One Friday night, I was alone with you. I mean, home remedies can have medicinal effects, even if they're not like proper medication. I just kept staring at your chest. You were struggling to get enough air into your lungs. But it's better than ignoring the issue. Breathing, and I got woozy. It set my head Why would you try copying what that? Did you do? Yeah, grab the phone. My call phone the doctor. You doctor. should have called the doctor sooner. I told him I didn't care what time it was, that I needed to come at once. I felt really guilty that it taken me that long. I hadn't wanted to disturb him. I was so scared. Scared that you were going to die. And when I got to the doctor's office, I was a mess. The doctor asked me what was wrong with you, and I said that you were having difficulty breathing, and he was so calm. Oh, he made me want to smash his teeth in. He asked me to put you down on the examination table and take your shirt off so he could listen to your breathing. And when he got close to you with his stethoscope... What happened? You were worried? You beat on him. You beat on him. Well... <laughs> Excuse me? This beautiful golden stream. A perfect arc from your hoo-ha to his coat. <laughs> Awkward. <laughs> well, you didn't mind at the time. You were chirping and staring at him. And he said, Well, this little girl looks perfectly healthy. And I started crying. Well, yeah. You must have been relieved. I thought so at the time. But it was more than that. I can see it now. The most important part of being a parent, and also the hardest lesson to learn. You need to trust your children. Trust them to pee on doctors? <laughs> trust them to live. You weren't there so I could feel like a good mother. You were there to live your life, to become yourself. Seems obvious, doesn't it? And that makes sense. But, but at the same time, like, you know, if they're ill, surely, you know, I don't know. I felt that I didn't deserve you. What? I don't believe it. I was your biggest fan, you know? Really? Of course. You were relentless. You even found the time to work on your scripts. You were even whilst breastfeeding, apparently. To make your stories amazing <laughs> while you were busy taking care of me. How did you manage to be strong like that? I mean, you have to, right? I mean, your father was there as well. I know! Imagine! <laughs> oh, come on! Mom, you know I love Dad with all my heart. But in my view, he probably regards mental fortitude as a kind of superpower. <laughs> <laughs> it was really hard. I almost gave up so many times. My career wasn't going where I wanted, certainly not as fast as I wanted. But especially I at this on. climate. <laughs> you gave me so much energy. I presume I took a lot too. 
Of I mean, course. giving and taking, it probably balances, well, I right? You had an off switch, especially when I saw my face in the mirror the next morning. But that was just a detail. Every morning was magical. I'd grab you in my arms. You'd smile back. You trusted me. I had no more doubt, no more questions. I knew exactly who I was. No one had ever looked at me that way. What an incredible gift. It's just a shame you spent your best years writing for soap opera. <laughs> wow. You do a great Marie impression. <laughs> <laughs> I'm better now, you know? I, I mean, she doesn't myself. seem better, does she? Because <laughs> suddenly she's talking to an imaginary dead child. Day, I can even convince myself that it could be worse. What's wrong with being a goth teenager? That's a good thing. Falling in love with Alec. I might have never from I'm going to go with the goth, goth teenager. Teenager. Nothing wrong with being goth. What's a goth? <laughs> well, I could show you a couple pictures of 14-year-old me. Unfortunately, I think they all got destroyed in a Oh, yeah, fire. sure. They were all destroyed in fire. You've taught me all of this. Also, not throw a beanie, but. <laughs> you opened doors inside myself. That's what allowed me to grow. Of course, I'll go on without you. I have to. But it's really, really sad. Life moves on. How does the movie end? What movie? The Eternal Sunshine of. Um, whatever. <laughs> he has a breakdown. <laughs> well, Jim Carrey and Kate Winslet meet again. And he doesn't want to forget her, so he tries to stop. They fall in love again. That's not the end. That's like and the beginning. Old recordings of them saying horrible things about each other. And they split up again. No, they decide to experience their relationships again because they want to recapture the good memories. Even though they know that it's going to hurt them. I loved that ending. I know what you mean. That wasn't the ending! Because he decides to have his memory wiped again, and then he starts to fight against having his memory wiped again, because he changed his mind. Doesn't so... Help <laughs> doesn't help me. I wonder if that would have been sure different if I would chose the other movie. Why waste any more time? It's not that easy. <laughs> you think it's that easy? That I can just press a button and pow? You, can be you don't so have a mind right thing. Sometimes. Okay. Excuse me? Where do I fit into all this? But I was just... So what? I'm going to be a bad memory for the rest of your life? A distressing thought inside your head? Do you even realize what that means? I'm scared. <laughs> what are you scared of, my little fawn? I'm scared that I'll disappear. But you're already dead. That's not the point. The memory I'm about will disappear. From here. This is the only place where I still exist. Just here. But I don't want to be this rusty nail that's killing you by degrees. You do realize that's that's not me at all. You do know that if you keep at this, I'm not going to exist anywhere anymore. You don't have to do this to me, Mom. You don't have to do this to yourself. How much longer do I have to make you miserable? Okay, well, we're gonna go back in time again. <laughs> I know you don't deserve that, my little dear. It's all my fault. Stop it, Mom. Just stop. You're stuck on repeat. I know that this can be easy to process. And I know that the truth hurts. But right here, right now, you're gonna have to remember. Really. I'm not sure what you mean. What are you talking about? She forces you to remember how she dies. Astrid? Astrid. She's right. Okay, it's less sunny all of a sudden. It's... I need to remember now. The scene is very it's different. Time. I think it is I'm time. Ready. Oh, it's because it's she's not gonna be a deer, is it? <laughs> now. Not everything, but because it's obfuscated it, so it's clearly not gonna be a deer anymore. All that rainbow 
but the mum's in the back. And you're arguing with the mum and then you run over your daughter. Why are you driving with heels on? That's stupid. I was exhausted. Stressed out. In no condition to drive. I was nervous about meeting with my producer. Yeah, this is all... I don't know why okay, I didn't real. see the deer earlier. My mind must have been elsewhere. When I heard your warning, my first thought was to avoid hitting it. They were your favorite animal. So I swerved and we ran off the road. And then... Then you crash. <laughs> there was... No, oh, there is a deer. I was going to say, there was no deer. It's just because it was all darker. The deer wasn't there until the last second. Where are we going now? What memory is this? The house. Okay. <laughs> okay. Sure. Laughter. <laughs> that tells us nothing. More laughter. I guess this is meant to be saying that she was happiness or something, right? That was quite a crash. So she bought happiness. That's all we're learning. And then she lost that because of the death. And then everything was empty and taken away. Listen to me, Juno. You and Alex brought an extraordinary little girl into this world. Astrid was our sunshine. She gave us all a lot of light all through her tiny life. You were able to make such a being because you have it in you. The sun. Except she said, the teacher says, it, it is death for sun. So hang on and shine bright. I know you can. I... I'm proud of you. Or it is dead, you the sun is dead. You have a connection that's... peculiar. You used to spend hours in her shop watching her paint. She loved that you were so curious. She smiled at you, explained stuff to you. She asked for your opinion about her work. Can you imagine? When I was four years old, I wasn't even allowed in her damn workshop. But you had something inside of you that completely changed her. Actually, I think this is what saved me that day. The idea that even Marie could be touched by a ray of sunlight. There had to be one out there for me too. All memories. Okay, the doll's house. Let's go explore inside first. Awkward. <laughs> Nothing else in sight. Okay. Nothing to see there. That moment has been and passed. It does not need to be spoken of any longer. What are you doing, my little fawn? Playing with Grandma's dollhouse. What game? I'm playing you when you weren't a mom yet. Can I play? I'll be Alex. Hey, cutie. You come here often? Hi. Do you want a baby? <laughs> This is moving a bit fast. Uh, what the heck? Let's make the best little girl on Earth. Of course she'll be the best. How do you know? Well, I'm the one making her in my belly, so... <laughs> well, that's... <laughs> Very fast. Yeah, let's have a baby. Okay, let's do this. Expecting the unexpected. I loved the way that your little brain continually managed to make sense of the world. But that day... The most astonishing thing was your assurance. How on earth did you have so much trust in me? I mean, you know, she's your kid, she should. You know, unless you're a shit parent, they should trust you implicitly. Because, you know, you should be there for them implicitly as well. So it's only right that it goes both ways. That thing in her eye, whatever that is, it's weird. 
Okay, what are we looking for in this scene? Mobile? No. Okay. Probably the painting? Damn, June, I can't believe it. I'm going to be a dad. We're going to be parents. When I got your picture, I yelled so loud, I think three guys here had a stroke. I'm just unable to focus on work. I'm so happy. <laughs> it feels so... I feel like... It's going well, yeah, to... it's going to change your life. Change no life. shit. <laughs> No, I mean, it's going to change me. Like, i never be the same again. I can't wait. And, and you, what do you think? I think you should take the afternoon off and come home. Oh, okay. But why? Is there an emergency? Do you need me? I don't need you. But I am wondering what it's like <laughs> to have sex with a dad. Uh, uh, <laughs> wow, what a weird thing to say. I'm on my way. He was right, you know, your dad. When you arrived, I mean, they gave up the drugs, which is good. Course. And, you know, Before you were born, he was always it would boss. bring you closer, wouldn't it? Wandering through his own life. But from the day you showed up, you know, then, you know, you could going to be a family. had become clear for him as if he finally understood what he was doing here. Makes sense. Happy smile. Work. Not there, okay. Probably at the picture, like, say, what is that in her eye, though? <laughs> There's something in her... It's her hair! Okay, yeah, no, it's not a shadow. You're seeing her hair through her eyeball, and it's weird. Beam of sunlight. It might be the right time for me to admit it, my little phone. You don't have magical powers. You never had any. You didn't put us under a spell. Not Marie, nor your dad or I. It's easy to hide behind the fact that your being there made everything else possible. And to convince ourselves that you're not being there is forever locking us out of being happy. But that's not true. The seeds that allowed us to change were always inside of us. Sure, they were buried deeply, but they couldn't wait to grow. And you, you were simply an incredible, a wonderful beam of sunlight and we rewind to remember <laughs> you don't have to do this to me mom you don't have to do this to yourself how much longer do i have to make you miserable you never were you never did <laughs> my little fawn i can't do this to you I don't know if I'll ever be able to forgive myself for what happened, but you've brought too much light to my life for me to reduce you to that. What is that? <sighs> it was. <laughs> Mom, what do you mean by that? Do you know what I mean? I do. But I'm not sure you do. So I'm going to need you to say it. What is that? <laughs> the accident. It was an accident. Oh, there's going to be words to click. Yes, it was an accident, Mom. I Why was that one and laughter message and in particular? <laughs> shouldn't ever have found that. Oh, yes. <laughs> you think I don't know that? <laughs> Glowing <laughs> vibrator, okay. I lived a great life full of love. I will always love Dad. This is the little lightsaber. <laughs> for everything you've given me. For the cozy spot that you made for me in your lives. And then one day, there was an accident. It was an accident. Say it again. An accident. It was an accident. An accident. A disaster. A calamity. There's nothing to forgive. It's not your fault. You know that, right? Deep down. 
do I? Then why do I feel all? I mean, you would feel guilty because you know. Yeah, that's another mystery. That's just you're angry. human and caring. Are you sure that you're angry at yourself, mom. You know, if I you don't, don't feel guilty, then you there's something you very wrong. Figure it out. And when you do, you'll make the right decision. I think you're ready now. I think you're ready now. I think I'm you're ready. ready now. Thank you, little fawn. Thank you for your help. You can leave now. I've got this. I know. To make the right decision to turn off your mum's life support. I love you very much, mum. Me too, Astrid. I love you very, very much. Do we make the <laughs> I wonder if you do get a choice. Like, do you make the decision? Like, does the game give you a decision? Or is it just like there's a predetermined decision? I can feel you are here, and it gives me strength. And I'm going to need a lot of that if I'm going to go in there. But Marie needs me, and we have a lot to talk about. Okay, time I to go in. Have asked the doctor to give me a little something before I went into this room. I mean, they wouldn't. <laughs> you don't get free samples of benzos every day. Would a benzo? All right, you know, cut the bullshit. Like um, depression drugs, probably. Sorry, I made you wait. I had to sort out a few things, a lot of things. But anyway. You knew I was coming eventually, didn't you? You've always had this weird gift of knowing what we're about to do before we even think about doing it. Once again, also, clearly no choice of text clicking thing here again. I, I almost didn't come in. I was close earlier. Pink band. I've only ever had a white one. So does door. pink mean, um, angry at you. you know, in danger of death? Know also, notice the religion exactly thing. The Hanging over her, which, considering the sister wasn't into religion, why do I always feel so threatened when I'm around you? <laughs> Come on, a crucifix? You yes, the religion thing. <laughs> That's the worst. Is it? I remember now. I've seen this before. The rosary. Was that last night? Oh, shit, no, it's. Uh, it's all hazy. It's a memory? <laughs> okay, there's new ways of discovering the memories. Okay, I get it. Uh, hold on. What's that around your neck? Is that a cross? This? It's a childhood keepsake. I found it in my stuff a while back. Jesus! What? <laughs> With no <laughs> eyes! <Fire girls? laughs> it's a bit more complicated than that. I'm listening. And he's not seeing. <laughs> he's never told me anything about you. Why does he have no eyes? Oh, but he can cry. What the heck? <laughs> With no eyes. I cry because I have no that eyes. Me good. And I owe you that. What's that supposed to mean? What did what was that food? Okay, just a burnt singular My god. <laughs> You're about to get slapped with your nose running. Like you got your nose is running. There's wine on the table. You've cut a steak in half and nothing else and not eaten the steak and why is there water running? And you're about to get slapped. I mean, clearly this is yours, like... Also, why is it gigantic there? Ebus with no eyes? I used to live in a small village in the east. Grey, boring, and hideous. People were dumb and mean, always keeping tabs on others to tear them down. And of course, these fakers were in church all the time. I spent years in that cesspool, never asking questions. When I was 14, let me tell you, Jesus was my best friend. I would tell him about everything I did wrong in my head. And let me tell you, I... We can't see any evil with our eyes. 
Nausea, ill-behaved, always running around. A tiny devil. And also, I had this desire and fire in my chest. Nasty thoughts. But I really thought that he loved me as I was. What were these nasty thoughts, huh? <laughs> Killing the birds! Oh my god. Sources of comfort. Jesus. Books. Wait, did she like killing creatures? So I spent an insane amount of time sketching in the neighborhood churches. It was a disease. Everything I laid eyes on had to end up on a sheet of paper. At least then, people left me alone. In loving memory of Jesus, with his eyes missing and his tears running. Okay, well, <laughs> one why has he got a? Oh, I was a crown of thorns, isn't it? I was gonna say, why has he got a spike for her? It almost looked like a hair, and why is it bleeding and crying at the same time? That doesn't make sense. Otherwise, <laughs> let me tell you that I never got a minute of peace. Family with four kids living in a two-room apartment, so. I looked after them, washing them, doing their homework. I was the oldest, seven years ahead of my oldest brother. Those little ones were like my own kids. My mother had too much work. At least, while I was taking care of them, I didn't have those weird desires. It, is, is her desire just going to come out that she wanted to murder birds and that's why she was obsessed with birds? My dad always had a steak on his plate when he got home. <laughs> well, that's chopped in half and nothing else. But he deserved it, working his Water. ass at the mill for us. But one night, I was still awake when he came home. He was completely shit-faced. He was living in a fallen world. The steel industry was his life, but his life had no tomorrow. So he drank. That night, Why? he looked at me... Weird. I didn't understand. I felt guilty. Mm. <laughs> and then... We were two peas in a pot, my aunt and I. She was the whore in the Oh, did he cheat on you with your sister? She didn't want kids. She had escaped to live the crazy life in Paris. Freedom. The exact opposite of my mother. One time... She told me something about my mom and dad. Something that blew everything else up. There was an evening dance. He was 19 and she was 15. According to my aunt, he was a bit tipsy. He brought her into a small clearing and there... He... Forced her. They had to get married in a hurry after that. When they learned that my mother was pregnant. Pregnant... With me. Oh... My mother always worked her butt off. She would work one factory job after the other, then clean up rich folks' homes. I used to think she was the bravest person in the world, and the strongest. Of course, she had her own temper. She would get into these screaming matches sometimes. I mean, she was probably she angry was with her because she probably felt that her life had I gone away because, you know, she had you at 15. The slap! One the slapping. I went out with some girlfriends and boyfriends. We only went to the movies, but she lectured me. You're bringing shame on this family, she said. People at church are talking. It's just projecting that's gonna that. happen to you if you keep tempting men. I answered that if it ever happened to me, I, for one, wouldn't marry my abuser. She hit me. Wow. For the first time. <laughs> she hit me again later. I was getting slapped around because she hated her life. I was blaming her for not fighting back. I wasn't going to let her treat me like this. Okay. Yep. Yeah. I get it. The day after, it felt like a spell was broken. The church stank. The sculptures were ugly. And the <laughs> male-dominated Jesus stuff made me sick. You don't love me. I whispered to him, bastard, <laughs> at that very moment, and that, let me tell you, that's something I'll never forget. The Christ started to bleed. I mean, it was probably just rust coming from the ceiling and dripping on him, and, you know, the, the colour of blood, but... 
you know, you take miracles as you see them. Oh, and then the picture in the shower is menstruation. I had my first of course. period right after my tantrum at the church. I was already 14 years old. Pretty late. But then my body started to tip up. And then it's wine spilt on the blood of the steak meat in murder. The more my body changed, the more my father scared me. Hell, he terrified me. Not just because he was domineering and brutal. It was uncomfortable even being in the same room as him. He was always what an watching me, commenting on my clothes. I felt like a piece of meat. A very thin steak that's been cut in half. Those deep from the slapping. That's what that is. The last time she raised her hand to me, she hit me so hard. My nose started bleeding. We were having another fight about one of my outings. By that time, I was going out for real. Just despite her. You know me. She called me a harlot. So, I bit back. At least I'm not gonna stick with the first guy who knocks me up. I didn't have time to finish saying it. Whack! She slapped the shit out of me, and she spit out. If it were up to me, you're the one I would have dumped. It's wow. Terrible. But that struck me right in the gut. And that's when it came up. That is something. kind of horrible thing the to say to your daughter. I tasted blood in my throat. I couldn't think straight. My ears started ringing. I felt a jolt running through my body. Then I... Get back. You stuck up for yourself. Good for you. And it was over. I couldn't walk it back. You killed her? <laughs> she killed her with the wine bottle, didn't she? I took it when I left home that very night. I stole it from her. I don't know why I took it. I used to do that a lot back then. Steal stuff. But I'm happy I did it. It gives me a chance to think about her. To oh, she just stole and ran away. And Same. Like <laughs> yeah, don't be like a shit parent. Be a better parent. Right. You see, I'm always telling you to face things head on. But that day... I, left. I mean, you had to leave that situation, to be fair. You can't just face that head on. Not her. You got out of the abusive situation, so that's the right thing to do. The kids. And I never turned back. Did the right thing. Life is unfair. You hear, Miss Kivas? Shit, don't tell me you fell asleep. Ugh, what a disaster. You really can handle your bruise. Don't worry, daughter. I will still be there tomorrow. And the next day, too. There to tell you again what you already know. People are ugly. Let me tell you. They're dangerous. But don't All let them be tainted by your bad experiences either, though. It's you insane. know, there's good and bad in everyone. The evil is. We need and to there are good people, ourselves. and Stay there vigilant. are bad people. Just, you know, find That's the good people and make them your family. Jen gets it's... it, I think. You, Not, darling. <laughs> don't be with the bad people that are just you bad for you people. and fuck you over. They're not the people you want in your life. Right. Cut them out. You can't trust anyone. You can trust people, but you know, you love and trust go hand in hand. You can't love without trust. <laughs> but you know, if you don't trust people, you'll never have love. So you have to have trust in people and those you, you love. But then you do open yourself to being hurt by people. So many things. Now I understand why you can't trust anyone. Just don't open don't yourself. Let don't let you. bad people don't hurt think you. About how it must have been for you. And you know, some people with no souls will just treat you like shit just to get themselves ahead and like, you know, don't let toxic people like that rule your life. Cut them out. But open yourself and keep yourself open to the good people and the happiness and the love. Not as a daughter, nor as a mother. But how could I forget what you told me last night? I mean, I wasn't all there. Too little sleep and too much wine. 
But for the first time in your life, you open up a little and I... Nod off? It's absurd. As if... You probably weren't ready to hear it. Was it that I was angry that you waited so long before telling me? Or was it... Something else? Something I didn't want to look in the face until now? Flowers? Where is this? What well, is <laughs> Death? Love? Life? May? <laughs> um, is she ascending? The rapture? We're still in the car crash and in the accident because <laughs> the whole world is. Wait for me. Watch out. Watch out for that deer. We're still in the accident and all the memories. Okay. Wait, we're just gonna live every memory. <laughs> That's a clever way of doing it. <laughs> just make the whole room spin and all of the items. Oh yeah, the pyromaniac, of course. That's why it's a lighter as well, because we did deliberately set the place on fire. This is, um, the music suddenly very intense. We're going to get to see behind the veil now, right? Into that other room. The blood's wine! Klingons. Pulsion. These paintings are magnificent. But how do you do it? Oh, well, that's hard to put into words. Usually I have a theme in my head, a topic I'm obsessed with, and all of a sudden everything becomes clear. The shapes, the colors, they fight their way through my brain. Kind of like visions. And then I simply must paint. I can't control it. In fact, <laughs> If I didn't paint in that moment, I could flip, do crazy things. I mean, we're just writing this as the While Jan and I were book. I could hear Marie doing her spiel on the Sasha. picture because you know the whole thing was times. the visions, uh, what she called her mystical experience. A whole lot of crap. Ten minutes later, I set the kitchen on fire, blinded by the urgency, as if my body was overriding my brain. Just go to show you. As much as I hate it, she might have been telling the truth about her process. I guess I work like that too. I said, you know, Jackson sounded weird then. Like, yeah, I'm very angry, determined. It's almost like a different voice actress, or, you know, trying to portray a different character. Like, that was very determined and very different to all the rest of the times that she's spoken softer. And, you know, I thought it was the, the date that was meant to be speaking then. <laughs> I need you, dear. <laughs> I can't, it doesn't look like it's hunting it. It's like, ah, oh, we're lovers. And so, you're working for Marina? It's not like that, Alex. Like what? I don't know. Like, I don't know what I'm doing. Like, I left you to run back to my overbearing mother's clutches. No, you're wrong. I'm, it's not, that's not it. It's, I'm... I'm well aware that you don't need your mother. She's the one who needs you. For a moment there, I thought Alex was out of his mind. Marie needing me? And the tomato pizza was never explained. <laughs> Jean Ponce of Holy. The Lobster. A terrible movie. <laughs> Don't watch it, it's so bad. The acting in it is atrocious. Okay, where's our thing? Is it gonna be Soulless Jim? Of course. I've been watching it backwards, that's why, because I'm pressing the forwards button, but it's actually backwards in this, so yeah, like, you know. <laughs> we went through all of the scene backwards, that's why. Because the buttons alternate in every memory. 
<laughs> to be awkward. Wait, what? <laughs> there it is. Shame. What about those over there in the tank? Are they still alive? Uh, of course. The true connoisseur prefer to cook their lobsters at the last minute. And I'll take them. Uh, absolutely, miss. Do you want to all of them? And I'm gonna return them to the sea. I mean, uh, <laughs> there's about two dozen in there. Did you win the lottery or something? I'll need one of your coolers too for the road. Because I'm gonna return them to the sea. Open the box and threw them back in the sea. Freeing them was <laughs> pointless, laughable even, but it felt amazing. I was able to change things. I could reject the fact that it is what it is. Just say no. What's the point in Good being alive if everything's already been decided for us? I agree with that. <laughs> A lot of money and expensive to do that, but you know, that's something nice to do. You know, maybe you haven't released them in their true habitat, so they're probably not going to survive. You're right, but <laughs> you know, Take them on a boat, like a proper sea liner, and then drop them off into the middle of the ocean, where they stand a chance. But again, you know, is it like cold enough climate there? I don't think your mum did murder the birds. I don't think that that's something she would do. Where did the bird go? Oh, it's, um, it's gone. It is? Yes. Early this morning, I opened the windows to let in some fresh air. It jumped on the edge of its box, looked at me, and then it flew away. Oh, did it look happy? It did, my dearest daughter. It looked so happy. That was a lie, of course. I know that now. But I believed that beautiful story at the time, without reservation. That's another thing which doesn't work in my relationship with Marie. The fact that she would lie to me because... She doesn't believe I'd be able to face the truth. The fact that she doesn't trust me to deal with it. I mean, she just didn't want you to have to deal with death, you know. Car keys. Okay, the car keys are probably going to be the last thing to glow, right? Even more intense the music gets. Nothing in sex. <laughs> It's just because this only moves in one direction, we have to check it. Why are you surprised? <clears throat> it's awesome. Really? Well, yeah. Have you looked at it up close? There's all this it is very you detailed. You can open the doors, move the furniture, turn on the lights. Marie must have spent a lot of time on it. I don't know. I think it's a nice That's a lot of time and a lot of effort. So that's a very good present. When Alex said that, I was reminded about... And obviously she did a lot for the mobile as well, yeah. Magnificent. Intricate. So she cares. In my room for so long, hanging above my bed. These two presents were the two singular proofs that Marie cared for us. That was yeah, putting effort into a nice little gift like that shows that you care enough. So you know, <laughs> insert thing I made for Lily. <laughs> Nobody really knows. But hey, you know, I made her a nice little banging Christmas gift that I put a lot of effort and care into making. You know, it's not expensive and it's, you know, but it's a lot of love was put into it. You know, I cat. <laughs> so we're going to clearly be going to the um, picture. Maybe we'll be going to the mobile because it's all about the love and care, but it also might be the artwork against the thing. But yeah, like, you know, I put a lot of effort into drawing that to, you know, make it all look good and make it a nice little hanging present. It's something that I could actually post abroad to Mexico as well, so. Thank you for the mobile. I can't believe you managed to find it. Oh. You know, it's you like, it's... It? Coffee, maybe? No, thank you. I gotta go. Not a lot, but it was made out of love and a lot of care. Yeah. Like, you know, it was details and it. Say hi to Alex for me. a lot of care. Oh, I'll call him. He's just in the next room. Oh, hi, Alex. Bye, Alex. Done. Gotta go. Bye. Hi, Alex. Bye, Alex. Being ill at ease, but the few times it did happen, 
is when she came to the house to visit when Astrid was born. It was as if she felt like she was intruding on our family. Maybe because she didn't know what it was like. Exactly. Didn't she one. didn't have one, so, you know, it's hard for her, right? Death. But again, she's dealing with that in her own way. Dealing with the situation in her own way. Mademoiselle, uh, could I have another glass of champagne? Oh, I don't work here. I'm Marie de Mange's assistant, also her daughter. Her daughter? Remarkable. <laughs> but you don't look anything like her. Do you paint as well? No, 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 I don't. I'm more of a... <laughs> of course you don't. Well, why would you? With such a talented mother. Wow. What a I dickhead. I feel like I'm competing with Marie. My love for the movies, my penchant for writing. I did it all for myself. It's just expressing in your own way. About her. But perhaps she was actually feeling threatened? As if the creative process was uniquely hers. Her exclusive... I doubt it. That doesn't sound right. The Rosary. Jesus. Wait, what? <laughs> Why is Jesus in a skirt on that rosary? Curse and a blessing. This isn't Curse of the slapping. It's unfair, but that's how it is. You didn't choose to be my daughter. I didn't choose to be my mother's daughter. Well, so that looks a heck in like my sister's daughter. <laughs> I don't know who's to blame, really. I do know that it's unavoidable, though. And Astrid, she didn't choose us either. She wasn't supposed to be part of this family. At first, I thought that she could be... And my sister was a terrible side. mother. And she did have in Sasha end, at a young age when she was, she was in school, so... Is it all adds up? <laughs> you know, the, actually, the timeline and everything for that does fit my sister. And now my sister doesn't look after her kids, my mum does. Because <laughs> she's a shit parent. Which is also, you know, the kids ran away, it fits the story. Okay, where are we going with this? All the way to the end, obviously. Pain. Hey, where's my thing to click? Right at the very end of time. Help. Mom? When I need somebody. What for? You know what for. For what you just told me. For not giving up on me. For your help. Listen to me, dear. One thing is for sure on this wretched earth. A single thing. It's that you could always you count. Thank me for anything. I'll see you Monday at the studio. I found that really weird at the time. This whole exchange. First of all, Mary saying beautiful things, sounding more loving than ever before. But on top of that, her almost scolding me for thanking her, as if. Extraordinary circumstances had forced her out of her self-imposed duty to bully me, and that she was having a hard time coming to terms with it. I told you the keys would be the last one. <laughs> Why does it sound like Hello Neighbor now? The neighbor's coming. Aha, we relive this one more time, and then we relive, never forget. Do not forget. Help! Needs! I mean, it's coming at us, but I can't click on it. When I need somebody, help! And your mum was in the car with you. It's stifling hot in there. Yeah, sorry, AC's broke. Get in, we're running late. 
Don't sit on my script. You could at least crack a window. All that rain brought a cool front. Mimo, Mimo, Mimo! Oh, sweetheart. How are you doing? You look great today. I'm a princess. The computer princess. That is so special. Can we get going? All right, all right. We have time. I don't. I need to drop off Astrid at Minas and then I have a meeting at the production office to show Yeah, if you'd have waited, then um, you wouldn't have crashed. <laughs> yeah, this is the third special favor this week, Marie. Just go in great. So if we hadn't have started the car, if we'd have waited, you wouldn't have crashed. Don't forget something. Um, Olsen? What is this Paulson? His name is Robert Paulson. Uh, that's spelled differently. <laughs> His name is Robert Paulson. His name is Robert Paulson. It's a deer. Ah, shit, I can't drive with these heels on. Why are you even wearing these things? Ah, silly me, just dressing up for a business meeting. <laughs> Sweetie, what present did you bring? You could have put the heels on after Please you finished pizza. driving as well. Pizza. You look really flush, dear. Are you too hard? As long as it's not tomato only pizza. Just for one second. Forget it. Sit down. We're almost there. Just watch the road. I'm almost. Okay, so she's distracting you. You are worse than the traffic cop. He was distracting you, huh? Competition. Slowly coming into view. <laughs> and click again and click again, which will let me eventually. What happens if I miss it? <laughs> what was the competition with you, right? Shit, watch it, my script! You're still writing for this garbage? Damn, Scabus. You might have the lowest self esteem I've ever seen, but I must admire your perseverance. No one asked for your opinion. I didn't sleep all night. I, I can't focus. Also, also, I'm too old for this. Okay, I'm taking off my coat now. Anyway, sounds like you're the car not moving. to be a mediocre writer. I mean, it sounds like she just wants better for you. Well, when I need somebody. Okay, I'm clicking. Like, these, these bits waiting for it to load in seem a bit slow. Like, you know, I see as I get the picture. Let me click it. Please, this is too much praise. I have to prod you some way or another. You are so incredibly lazy. And they keep coming. All these flowers, really, I can't. Nothing ever comes easy to women in this industry. I had to build it all myself. No one was there to help me. I slept four hours a night when you were born. I worked all the time to provide for your needs. Oh, you really gave me everything, Marie, except perhaps self-esteem. Oh, and a father. You're not making sense, June. Wow. You and your sister would be nothing without me, and you know it. You're both churlish and fearful. I gave you everything, and you're just squandering it all to write soap operas. Maybe you'd be a better writer if you had had to toil a little bit more. Who knows? And she just wants better for you, that's all. Okay, well, um, there it is. Family! Family. Was Don Toretti the dad? <laughs> that run away. I thought it's a bit awkward to make Fast and Furious references in a car crash. I only just thought of that. It's a little uh, late <laughs> now. Uh, uh, with a thingy. Uh, what's that, my little phone? Sure, just change the subject. I am not changing the subject. We weren't talking. What am I supposed to say when you get mad like this? I get mad because I believe in you. Stop yelling. We're not yelling, sweetheart. Anyway, this little one... I thought there was an awkward argument well. as well. Speaking of which, if we could but avoid... if you're mishandling her the way you fucked up your career, that's concerning. Children are delicate. They need protection. You can put even the best child in a shitty family. They're gonna blow up. Wait, why are you even saying that? What are you talking about exactly? The Rome issues. Are they pigs? <laughs> I don't think they're sheep anymore. Like family curse. 
But they actually kind of look like weird doggos in the way as well. Okay, I can see the family curse. I'm clicking on it. I made some mistakes with you two. It's true. But we turned out okay in the end, didn't we? Whatever you think, you don't get it. There's something hanging above our heads. All of our heads. Something that's about to fall on our heads if we're not careful. The sword of Damocles? Passed from one woman onto the next in our family, like a disease. Are you sick, Mima? No, sweetie, she's not sick. This is grown-up talk. You're right, Jun. Love. Love of self. It's true, I don't think I taught you that. But I think that's because no one taught me either. Or my mother. Oh. You need to love yourself. Or scared for Astrid. Need to learn to love yourself. Change! It's time to change! Never too late to change. As the black sheep in the family eats the grass. Okay, let me click change. I can see it, I can read it change. There we go. <laughs> Great Marie de Mange, you believe in that nonsense? There's no curse on our heads. Next time I'll keep my mouth shut. Unless you keep it open, actually. I know hardly anything about your life. Not a thing, but I do realize that you had a hard time. And that you're scared. <sighs> I'm not scared. I think you are. Your scared will turn out like you. But we can change. Everyone can change. <laughs> My dear daughter, I'm not sure about that. Do you think so? I know so. And then, watch out for the deer! Of course, your, your hand's covering the deer at the time. Love. Never too late to love. Loving. Never forget loving. That's all thanks to you. You taught us that in your own twisted, painful way, but still, I did what I could. And in the end, you did give us the means to change things. You've taught us how we could blow off the entire world and do whatever. What we if wanted. we could change the your way of showing outcome up? here if we notice the deer and click the deer? Oh, come on, you love me and I know it, in spite of your. Although that screaming child. And I love you. <laughs> and I love you too. We can hear the death scream. Thank you, dearest. Makes me so happy to hear you say that. Like, can you hear? I know it sounds like just a big whistle, but it's quite clearly the screaming death child of the crash. It's been going on for a while now. Lie? Love? Watch out for the deer. Get out! Dumb. She was sweating. I just took off her sweater. No Shit, big deal. I told you to keep her safety belt on. Are you kidding me? You know you're so uptight sometimes. Unbelievable. I am not uptight. I would just like Mom, you to. Mom, watch for the deer. <laughs> yeah, you shouldn't maybe try and steer away if you know that your child's not in a safety belt. It'd be safer to hit the deer than to try and steer away when your child is not secure. Like, you literally just made her fly across the car by steering away. Better to break and try and hit the deer and, than to send her flying. Crystal water. Don't forget. Okay, hey, am I meant to be finding a memory? This just the end? The phone that just <laughs> zoomed through the ceiling, clipped through the ceiling, don't worry about it. It's fine. It's your fault, mother. It, it was 
You? Y you knew, didn't you? The fight, the, the unlatched safety belt. I'm sure you remembered, and you didn't say anything. You just hung me out to dry with my feelings of guilt. Yeah, that's not nice. That's the real reason. That's why I was so mad at you. I'm sure that's also why you filled in this stupid paper with my name on it. You probably thought that if anything happened to you, it would be some kind of divine justice. I would have a choice of what to do with you. And now I have to make the decision. So what am I supposed to do, Marie? Well, that makes it even more awkward, because, like, it's cutting her off. <laughs> wow, we have three choices. Of course, there's always a third option. Um, we could leave her to live and hope that she lives. We can agree, which is what she wants, because she wants to die, because we've already established that. But then would that also be accused of killing her because of what she did or we could just refuse to even participate in that which is like give the sister the option but she wants to die and we should choose to let her die because that's her wishes and it's not out of malice it's out of these are what she wants maybe the flowers are not it's what she wants. You agree to play by your rules one last time. Oh, we just get to hear them all. Maybe we could invent something else. We deserve that. Why would I make my peace with you? Oh, that's angry. <sighs> <laughs> no, which one? I can't give what you want is angry. Very well, we agree. I understand what you're missing. Like, I want to agree. Very well, Marie. We agree. I'm going to tell the doctor not to take life prolonging measures. That's what you would have wanted. But just so you know, I'm not doing this for you. I'm doing this for Diane. She loves you, you know? She doesn't want you to die. But I don't want you to begrudge her for still being alive. I'm doing this it's nice that they actually gave you an option. Because I hate you. I hate you for what you did to Astrid. I hate you for my years of defenselessness and anger. I think I'll never be able to not hate you. I actually understand your fear of not... It'd be worse to let her live and hate her. I understand it because... That's how I've always lived. It's horrible. And it stops today. It ends today. And now we type the screenplay. The other swan asleep, she wakes up, very gently whispers a few words. Get out here. <laughs> we just get the whole screenplay of what our decisions were. Gazing into the sea as a mysterious grin gradually appears on her face. Mom! You promised we'd go to the park. And we will. Just give me five more minutes, will you? Are you sure you want to validate your screenplay so we can maybe change our decisions? No, this is the decision that I live with. The end. Good work. All right, all right, Ashil. Here we go. At last! Are you happy with your story? I think so. Fine. You'll read it to me later? Mm, I'm not sure. It's not really a story for kids. The car crash. I want to trade the red stickers. Sorry. The flowers. Uh, Did you know his tail is actually a slime? Maybe relevant really? as well. Can I try it too? Only if we buy ice cream on our way back. Seems like a fair deal to me. And then <laughs> it logs out for me. I don't get to choose that. <laughs> Adaptation kill bill achievements. I didn't do it as like kill them all. I didn't. Kowloon Knights. Yes, supported by, funded by. 
There's an interesting story, a lot of emotional bits. I would obviously recommend playing it yourself. Obviously, there's different options and different choices. And I guess, you know, editing, you could probably go back and change your decisions on some things. But I stand by my decisions. I don't go back and edit. And obviously, it was, you know, very artistic. And like people have said, like Gonzalo said, it's a lot like Life is Strange. You know, I saw that with the time traveling sorts of aspects and things as well. Now, the questions at the end there as well is, like, you know, she was having a different kid. Like, is that later in the future she moved on, she had another kid? Or was this just a screenplay the entire time? Obviously, she was a writer. But I feel like she was doing that later in life, you know? I feel like that was she then moved on from this and then had another family and another child later. So that's my take from it, you know. <laughs> what you take from it might be different. And obviously, if you choose something different, that whole end scene could be completely different. So who knows what the heck happens. You know, maybe the mum is still there if you choose to let the mum live. Or, you know, who knows what happens with the refusal. But that's what I chose. And yeah, it was interesting. It was emotional. I would recommend playing through for yourself, making your own decisions, choosing your own things. Obviously, you don't need to click all the things like I did, and you can listen to all the things. Dedicated to Helene Benichau and Lily Clier. And it's also a novel <laughs> on the website. So maybe you can read the novel and, um, you know, maybe see the different things and different options there. The director picks the character and deals with difficult themes, sickness, Brief toxic relationships and self harms include scenes that may not be suitable for all audiences. It's reset now. <laughs> right without fear, love without fear. Yeah, I'd recommend it for yourself. It was definitely an experience. Now, I don't know what this whole bin is. Okay. Interesting. <laughs> Pictures, the deer, because I never clicked this, I just clicked on the right thing before, the crash. It's an actual picture of a car crash. It's a different colour car, like it's a silvery one. So did this actually happen to someone? I feel like this is actually someone's actual experience. Concept art for Marie, who looks fancy. Obviously, an artist, an angry, angry dog. Why? What? You not and the doctor are the same person. I don't think that's right. <laughs> I don't think that that is right. Alex looks a lot younger and a lot more criminal. There. There's the real doctor. So why is Astrid or Jinon the doctor as well, Diane? And then Astrid, which again, you know, were these things that we unlocked by going through, um, you know, 100% complete. So we can start a new screenplay or, you know, open that and edit it or bin it. <laughs> um, I wonder if there's any more secrets. That is weird that the dock there, like, I don't know, there's probably more secrets to discover than I have learned. There's Wi-Fi, there's all sorts, you know, is it a little bit like um, Doki Doki Literature Club in some ways? I don't know. <laughs> I don't think it goes quite that deep into how crazy it goes. But yeah, I'd recommend it. And um, yeah, that's why I'm going to call it there. I'll be back on Wednesday with another new game and i will catch you then have a nice rest of your week and i'll see you all again soon bye bye bye, bye.